The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. After his baptism, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, for where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, one does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, Throw yourself down from here, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, it is said, do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Good morning. The kids who are here for the early service are getting a crib sheet for Sunday school, so take notes, guys, okay? One of the lines uh, in our, our Father is, keep us from temptation, deliver us from the time of trial, those two things are there embedded in the prayer that Jesus taught us. What does it mean to face temptation? Now, for me, at least in my home and in my house, it means I have to walk by the closet with all the snacks in it. Temptation is pretty much often carbs. But it's deeper than that, more profound. And it's not really all that complicated. As Jesus demonstrates to us, the temptations we face as human beings are threefold and pretty well articulated in the scripture we have today. It is tempting to look at the story about Jesus after 40 days in the wilderness being tempted by Satan as some form of celestial theater, scriptural construct for us to look at and observe rather than to see ourselves not only reflected in it, but also illustrated in that. Jesus is at the very core and heart of his humanity. And in that humanity, he walks not only alongside us, but he shows us more profoundly who we are in those places that we would rather not go. There are three questions that the devil asks of Jesus. The first confronts his own hunger that trigger that we all have in our lives. And hunger takes many forms, not just for food. And we have to acknowledge that hunger is the thing and appetite is the thing that drives us in so many ways. It is the core of desire, whether it is for basic sustenance or rich or sweet or savory or too much, or anything, hunger drives us. And sometimes that is because of deprivation in another time as Jesus is experiencing. And now he's been hungry for 40 days. What makes this day different from any other? He is only more profoundly aware as we are every day when appetite strikes what hunger feels like. I've been blessed in my life that in over a half a century of existence, I can honestly say I've only been hungry once. And I'm deeply aware of what that signals about my privilege, but also I'm deeply aware of the memory of that moment 
So this is the thing they don't tell you about hunger. There comes a point in hunger where you stop having an appetite. You stop desiring food. You just exist. But the moment that food is actually presented to you, not just your stomach, not just your salivary glands, but every atom of your being starts to hurt because you suddenly are aware of how long you have been without. And Jesus is tempted by the accuser who says to him, you have power. Take that stone and make it bread. The pat answer is one does not live by bread alone, but the acknowledgement is, is Jesus knows and we need to understand that a loaf of bread done under our own power at the expense of anyone or anything compounds the wrong and the scandal of hunger in the first place. In this life, as we know here at St. Peter's, we are not just here to feed ourselves. We are here to feed all who are hungry. No one goes away from this table or any table on this campus without a full belly and a full heart. We do not live by bread alone, but by bread we can feed the world and all who are hungry in it. It is an acknowledgement we understand when Jesus says this, that it's not about us and our bellies, but about grace and service. Jesus shows him all the nations of the world and says, if you will just set aside your relationship with the divine and worship me, I will give you an empire. How tempting it is for us with all the privilege and resources we possess in this world to succumb to the desire to inflict and control. One of the things that clergy, when we gather, joke about is control issues. I mean, come on, look at me. I'm dressed in robes. I have a floor length. What man do you know can rock a floor length ham at 8 a.m. in the morning? But the temptation is so great, isn't it? To set aside the things that should be our values and instead embrace the things that get us to the point where our desires are fulfilled, where we feel at the center of our being that we have control over it. One follows God, says Jesus, and no other. Then comes the hardest one of all. Confronts us all in all of the moments when we struggle for meaning and for purpose in this life, in our relationship with God and in relationship with other people. It takes Jesus to the top, the pinnacle of the temple. There is no higher place mythically on the face of this earth than that for people who follow Jesus and for those who walk in the way of Moses. Throw yourself from here because God has promised that the chosen one will not dash their foot against a stone. So tempting to put God to the test. Jesus reminds us that is not why we're here. The temptation to put God to the test is to say to God, I know you love me, but prove it. I know you're in charge, but prove it. I know you are a blessing to all those who follow you, but prove it. When in truth and in grace, the proof is ever before us. Every single day of our lives, if we are but willing to open our hearts and our minds and our spirits, to trust the fact that when anything is undertaken in the name of God, it is undertaken with the intention to serve, to love, to feed, to care, to lift up, to bind up, to discover and recover that which is lost, and even at its greatest moment, to bring life back to the dead. 
The reason we have this moment at the beginning of Lent more than any other moment in any other time in our walk with Christ is to understand that Jesus is us every single step of the way. Not an abstract, but in literal truth and reality. I'm not asking you to embrace the platitude of footprints in the sand. I'm asking you to understand that every single thing that makes us struggle and continue vine jesus has embraced and struggled with himself and his humanity and thereby offers us a way and a path forward so that we can be reconciled to each other we can be reconciled to god and the agents of that grace that paul points to as he exhorts the romans to wear this reality not only in our hearts but upon our sleeves to make it known and to let people hear and see that God answers our hunger. God sustains us with authority. And God loves us and cares for us, even when feet are dashed against stones or stones are hurled in anger and intent. Understand that the first step we have to take is the same step that Jesus embraced as he was coming out of the wilderness to proclaim his earthly ministry news of salvation and life in God to the world. And that is that God loves us. And God's feeding us quickens us to feed all who seek and hunger for righteousness and for bread for consolation and for hope, for healing and for life, and for justice and peace among every human being. Amen.